right, there we go. Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and I am wearing shorts, which I think is the first time I have on the channel uh, because I'm in Hawaii. It's a tough gig, but I partnered with Qualcomm and flew out here for the 2021 Snapdragon mm -hmm. Summit. But tan lines and pina coladas to one side for a minute, I want to talk about some tech because Qualcomm have just unveiled a whole bunch of cool stuff. From this brand new chip, which will be powering most of next year's flagship phones, a whole new gaming handheld device, as well as next gen 5G laptops, proper lossless Bluetooth audio, and it's all powered by Snapdragon. Let's start with this guy, a brand new chip. This will be powering most of next year's flagship phones. Well, this one is a piece of plastic, but inside we have this little illustrative system on a chip. It's the all new Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. And for now, Qualcomm have been showing it off in this reference design phone, so not one you can actually buy, but this is their latest flagship chip. So moving on from last year's 888 and 888 Plus, they've changed up the naming scheme a little bit, so now we have the Snapdragon 8, which is the flagship tier, and this is the Gen 1 version of that. And it looks to be a pretty tasty upgrade with significant performance improvements, AI and camera upgrades, faster connectivity, and also new audio tech. And so in probably just a few weeks, we'll start seeing the first phones shipping with these new chips. And the headlines include up to 20% faster processor performance, 30% faster graphics, while also up to 25% power saving at the same time, so faster and hopefully better battery life. But that's nothing compared to the four times faster AI, which helps with everything from cameras, upscaling, noise canceling, and also efficiency to get the best battery life. So some pretty big upgrades are coming to these next gen 2022 model of phones, but really it's the camera where you can often see some of the biggest innovations. And that's because the image signal processor or ISP on the chip plays a massive part in how good your phone's camera is. So the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 packs in a all new 18-bit Spectra ISP, which captures 3.2 gigapixels per second of data. And that's actually 19% faster than before on the Snapdragon 888. So we're getting more detail and better dynamic range, and you can even shoot in 18-bit RAW. So while we've been here at the Snapdragon Summit in Hawaii, uh, Qualcomm used this reference phone and loaded up some camera demos to kind of show off some of the new features that we might see uh, from upcoming phones. And one very cool new feature is the fact that this new ISP can actually capture images from three lenses simultaneously. Now we have had the ability to preview and switch between multiple lenses before, but not simultaneous capture. So potentially you might not have to worry about what lens to use as you could get an ultra wide, a wide and a telephoto shot with just one press of the shutter button. Again, this is something that Snapdragon 8 technically supports, but it doesn't necessarily mean all Snapdragon 8 powered phones will eventually offer this. We'll have to see. Not only that, but this new ISP with what Qualcomm calls Snapdragon Sight can now capture 30 images in one snapshot. And these are then combined for a higher quality, better dynamic range photo. And this could significantly improve low light night mode shots. And we should get reduced blur as well as the camera can track every pixel in the frame now. I also got to play with this new 140 degree live panoramic view mode. So no more carefully turning on the spot only to have something ruin the photo as you make a panorama and there's no distortion even on the edges and no waiting for photos to be stitched together. This might actually make me take panorama shots again. Another demo showed off a new motion blur mode which takes a bunch of photos over a few seconds and then combines them and then gives you quite a cool blur effect on a moving subject like this waterfall. Again, this is all pre-release software on non-retail phones, but hopefully it gives you an idea of what you can do with it. Switching to video, and we now get support for 8K HDR video, including HDR10 Plus at 30 FPS. And you can take 64 megapixel photos at the same time while recording. Qualcomm also showed off this real-time video motion blur, and this actually uses AI face detection, which means we only get that bokeh effect when it detects a person. We have seen similar tech on other devices before, but now it'll be available on even more phones. So there's a whole bunch of upgrades with a new chip, but one area that I don't think we really talk about enough is sound and Snapdragon sound, which is this whole ecosystem around giving the best audio for your music, for your games, especially when you're uh, using wireless earphones like this. They've had some pretty big announcements as well. 
And the headline is that the new chip with Snapdragon Sound supports, for the very first time, lossless CD audio over Bluetooth. Which for audiophiles is actually a really big deal. This is an industry first. When eventually we have phones and headphones that support this in a few months, you'll be able to stream music over Bluetooth without any loss in quality. And really that's just the cherry on top of Snapdragon Sound, which also gives us ultra low latency audio, which is particularly useful in games when you've got your wireless earphones in so you get that instant audible feedback, plus some really handy AI noise cancelling for calls and a whole lot more. So far so good then, but I think I'm most excited about this. It's an all new handheld gaming platform powered by the Snapdragon G3X chip. Now this is just a dev kit made by Razer and we'll see final retail devices coming in 2022, but it's designed to be the place to play all of your games, whether it's mobile from the Play Store or full fat proper games streamed from the cloud with something like Xbox Game Pass or your console or your PC. Now my good friend Enabong from Board at Work is my go-to expert on mobile gaming and he came away really impressed with both how smooth the frame rate was when playing games natively on the device and also streamed over Wi-Fi and 5G and also the battery life. So front and center is this big 6.65 inch 120Hz HDR OLED screen, which looks absolutely stunning and with this 20 by 9 aspect ratio, it's a pretty big handheld. So you've got your physical controls and the touchscreen has been mapped to these controls so you can play mobile games with more precision. We also get advanced cooling, haptic feedback, two front facing speakers built in with support for Snapdragon sound. There's also a 1080p webcam up front if you want to do some streaming and you can dock it with your TV or monitor via the USB-C which supports DisplayPort and then you can game in up to full 4K 144Hz HDR. So it's all powered by the new Snapdragon G3X Gen 1 platform. And as well as that, we also have a healthy 6,000 mAh battery. We get the latest Wi-Fi 6E, as well as 5G built in for streaming on the go. And also very importantly, the drivers for the graphics can be regularly updated. So we'll keep getting optimizations for games over time. Now this is just an example device. So we'll have to see what the exact specs, performance, and of course price will be when retail devices start coming out later in 2022. But it is a really interesting alternative to a Switch or a Steam Deck and I can't wait to spend more time with it. It's essentially a whole new platform for gaming and we don't see that very often. And finally, Qualcomm unveiled the all new 8CX Gen 3 processor for thin and light laptops. These chips are an alternative to your traditional x86 based Intel and AMD chips, plus it's the first chip for Windows built on a smaller 5 nanometer process and promises up to 85% better processor performance and 60% faster graphics compared to last year's HCX Gen 2. Plus Qualcomm says we'll be getting the same multi-day battery life, 5G and Wi-Fi 6E support, plus a whole bunch of AI improvements and a new camera ISP. It's important to take this seriously, you know. And breathe. That was a lot of tech news, but let me know what you're most excited for in the comments below. I think for me, I just can't wait to get my hands on a proper next-gen phone powered by the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. And also hopefully it won't be too long until I can properly test that new lossless Bluetooth streaming at home in the studio where I can really put it to the test. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed the video, and I promise I won't make any more videos in shorts. No one wants to see that. And I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.